Well, I think that we are, and I'm so glad that we are here today, uh, gathering together uh, to talk about a very important subject. Uh, we're talking about open enrollment. As we know, uh, December the 15th is the last date for open enrollment for 2020, I believe, is the date, uh, closing date. Uh, so we get a chance to talk about that. And we also talk about life and some mm -hmm. things that we need to, to be real about in terms of uh, making sure that we have everything in place for our loved ones as well. So I'm excited to welcome our guest today. Uh, we have uh, Angela Ross Williams. All of these are members of Salem, and I'm so glad uh, Angela has served over 39 years, uh, both in human resources, IT, also uh, chemical dependency, health counselor. I mean, she's done it all. Uh, one of the things that she was able to do is develop her own business. And she uh, took all of her skills to, uh, to develop that for the purposes of working uh, together to help us to structure uh, things for seniors. And then eventually she was able to become a part of the role of SHIP. And if you're not familiar with that, SHIP is a very important element uh, that is available as a senior for seniors today. Uh, SHIP allows us to understand that uh, there are things that we have to uh, process uh, in terms of our health and our development. Uh, she has done that in all of the aspects of her life. She is a SHIP representative and she is doing an amazing job uh, helping our seniors, helping those uh, with the Department of Aging. Uh, she works with Medicare, with seniors and those who are disabled. Uh, she also is a resource, amazing senior advocate. She's bonded as a notary. Uh, she also has uh, both seniors and disabled uh, individuals who are 64 and younger that she has worked with. Her goal is to teach one the, uh, is the only way that we continue to grow in a culture in our community, uh, currently on leave of absence, but she is here tonight uh, to help us to make aware of Medicare's annual open enrollment and how she can help us to improve those benefits and costs. Uh, Belinda Johnson Jordan is with us. Belinda Jordan, she's a licensed independent life and health insurance agent, but she's specializing in Medicare health plans and retirement solutions and life insurance for every stage uh, for pre existing conditions. We'll put up her information a little bit later so that if you need to talk to her, she will be available for you to talk to her later. We also have Thomas Henderson, who is a state farm agent. He is the uh, president of his own and owner of his own agency, a uh, highly successful insurance agency. He's here to talk about uh, the value for us in terms of trying to figure out in this age how we can get the right insurance that we need uh, for our life. And then he's also uh, not only that, but he's involved in our community uh, as a vice president of one of our very prestigious community organizations. He's vice chairman board of directors for the 100 Black Men of America. So with a hearty thank Yes. Chicago. Chicago, Chicago. Yeah, I haven't made that level yet. <laughs> <laughs> and so okay. we're glad to have them all with us today. Thank you guys for your expertise. And we look forward to hearing from you now. So Angela, we're going to go on and start out with you. All right. Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. Before we get started, I'd like just to put out a word of prayer. Father, we just thank you for allowing us to come together once again in one accord, Lord. Let your Holy Spirit rain down on us, open our minds, open our hearts, Father God. Remove the fear that may be there, Father, And because you didn't give us fear. You gave us power, love, and a sound mind. And tonight, help us to help those who have questions. Let us be clear, precise, and to the point, and be able to help those so that they can continue to help others. We thank you, and we ask all things in the mighty and majestic name of your son, Jesus. And we say amen. amen. Thank you so much, everyone. It's great to see some of you. I haven't seen you in a bit. We've all been out and down. And I thank Reverend Yvette for 
asking for time to come and help talk about Medicare open enrollment. Uh, the open enrollment period begins October 15th and it goes through December 7th. And that is every year it's the same date. Um, I'm going to take a minute and pull up some information that I have here to just ask some questions as to why is it important? If I'm already on Medicare, why do I have to do an open enrollment? So if you will bear with me and we'll pull that right up. Can everyone see the screen? Mm -hmm. All right, Medicare and You 2021. Uh, this is the booklet that if you might've received if you're already on Medicare through the mail. Uh, with COVID this year, a lot of things have changed. So things that might've come out automatically via mail. Um, I requested a couple to make sure that I had them. If indeed you did not get one and you're interested in one, just let us know and I can get you a couple ordered. Uh, again, open enrollment is through October 15th through December 7th, 2020. And I was very um, thankful the Reverend Yvette asked us to come together to do this because if you're like me, you see on TV, all these commercials saying open enrollment is closing today. You know, anybody ever watch football and you saw Joe Namath, he's on there every day. Well, he is representing some insurance agents who um, they help you to get certain types of insurance, not only life, but Medicare coverage um, called Medigap. And we'll go over that in a moment. But if one of the questions is, what is Medicare open enrollment? It's a period of time that allows you to compare your current Medicare coverage and pricing for any changes that begin January 1st of the new year. Why is open enrollment important or necessary for me to do? I am already enrolled in Medicare. Well, there are a few reasons why it's important for you to check. Uh, if you're already enrolled in Medicare health and drug coverage, you may want to make changes for the coming year. Um, maybe your health situation has changed and you're healthier, you're feeling better, and you want to change to one of the other plans uh, from original to Medicare Advantage, and Ms. Jordan will cover that uh, later or you need to change your prescription drug plan. And that is very key because if you are taking prescription medications, it is almost vital that you double check those before the new year comes. Sometimes the pharmaceutical company no longer will be carrying that medication or the price could increase to a point that you might not be able to afford it. And uh, I have a real life story. Um, lady was getting medications. She did not check for the coming year. She went in to get her medications on January and she was handed a bill for $1,250. Uh, if she had checked, she would have seen that that medication had changed the way it's distributed. <laughs> And if you were admitted to the hospital, then it would have been paid for. But walking into the pharmacy, you had to come out of pocket. We were able to quickly get with her doctor. The doctor was able to get with the hospital and with Medicare and she was able to get it. But it was a scary point uh, at 4.45 in the afternoon before everything closed down. So that's one of the reasons to check it for sure. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the premium goes up because on your Medicare Part D, which is for drugs, you need to know, am I still gonna be paying the same premium? Maybe you weren't paying any premium in the year of 2020, but next year, maybe I might have a premium to pay. So those are just some of the reasons that you might, I encourage you to get online, either call Medicare, and just take some time and go through and double check to make sure you're ready to and set to go before the new year rolls in. If you're new to Medicare, what does open enrollment have to do with me? Well, being new to something, it's always good to see what options you have available to you. 
when you become new or eligible for Medicare, you do get a letter from uh, Medicare services. Your Medicare card is attached. It tells you your effective date. It also tells you that they've enrolled you in original Medicare. That means part A for hospitalization and part B for your doctor visits. And again, Sister Jordan will go more into detail with that. However, you might want to be able to have something that is a bundle together, meaning I get everything I need under one, one actual Medicare Advantage, I was trying to avoid saying the name, Medicare Advantage, uh, maybe you travel a lot. You could see the differences is if I'm in Chicago today, Tennessee tomorrow, Arizona the next month or so, visiting family and friends, how does Medicare work then? So that's a reason that someone new to the service should go on and check. Uh, one thing that about Medicare, they continue to listen to Medicare beneficiaries or people who are covered under Medicare. They listen to physicians. They listen to representatives like ourselves. When we have problems trying to service Medicare beneficiaries, we do report back and there's a reporting system. And each year I have seen fantastic improvements. This year was the most uh, outstanding where you can actually begin October 1st and do what they call a compare. You pull up your information, you can create your own account. And I would encourage everyone to do that because if you're on prescription drugs, you need to actually put those drugs in the system. Mm -hmm. You need to put the dosage. You need to put uh, how many times per day you take them. And that's part of what we do as SHIP representatives. We help you do that if you need assistance. If you have someone in your life that who you know respects what your wishes are and will do what you want them to do, get them involved with you going through Medicare open enrollment so that they're familiar with the entire system. Um, Medicare going through open enrollment, it allows you to change or elect your Medicare supplement. It's also called a Medigap. And that is through an outside insurance carrier and you pay for that monthly. Well, why do I need a Medigap program? If you're on original Medicare, parts A for hospitalization and B for doctor visits, there is a charge that you have at the end 20%. If you had a dollar, 80, 80 cents out of that dollar would be paid by Medicare, you would be responsible for the other 20. That might not be something that is affordable to you, but you could get a Medigap plan that would then assist you in paying that balance. Um, so you want to be able to look. Not every insurance carrier offers those plans, but you could go look on because you sign on. You, it, they want to know what state you're in. And then it pulls all the carriers that offer plans for you in your state. Final, the last, the next thing is extra help. I don't know if any of you have heard about that, but extra help helps those who have limited income and resources to pay their Medicare drug costs. Uh, it is actually a program through the National Social Security Office where I see it the most automatically applied is to those who are age 64 and younger and are on disability. However, you can go and ask either online or by calling and ask to be considered because uh, then they will want certain information from you such as your income, um, last taxes, they will tell you what they need. A SHIP representative can help you do that either by phone or by making an appointment. The very last point that I need to stress to you is Medicare talks to you and you only about your Medicare plan, anything that you've had done or need to do. In the event that you're not able to speak for yourself, um, you have the ability to authorize who Medicare can speak to on your behalf in the event, let's say you went into the hospital, 
Hospitals don't keep you as long as they used to. Do you remember the days we had babies and we'd be in there three weeks? Well, now you're out in 48 hours, good Lord willing. Um, but Medicare can stop that discharge if you do not feel that, no, I am not well, I cannot go home. If you're not able to speak to Medicare, the person you authorize could take step into your place and they could take the, over that and they could tell Medicare what's going on and Medicare will cease that discharge. Uh, a social worker at the hospital could do that also, but you have to be able to get the social worker and you have to be able to speak to the social worker. So always think about who is it that will honor my wishes on how I want to be cared for. The Medicare uh, website does have the form or you can contact Medicare directly and tell them you want to establish an authorized person to speak on your behalf when you're not able to. Going through all of that, we've come and put together a list of all the contact numbers and websites for you. During this period of COVID, uh, many, most of the uh, uh, senior centers have closed. There are people working inside them, but no longer can you just walk up, walk in and get services. However, here we have the Chicago Senior Assistance Hotline. You can call that number downtown. They can tell you which facilities are still having, uh, taking appointments for those to come in for the SHIP program. And that means Senior Health Insurance Assistance Program. And that's what we're called, SHIPers. Uh, we work right along with the state. We work along with uh, companies who have a full-time ongoing uh, SHIP employees. I am a volunteer. I volunteered my services to assist because there's just too many of us out here that don't know many of the benefits that we have available for us. All of this is through the Illinois Department of Aging. The second number takes you straight down to Springfield and this is the website and on that website you can actually look for a SHIP representative in your area you can see which facilities are open, but many of those have not yet been updated due to COVID. So I would strongly suggest that you speak to a person. Um, when I spoke about, uh, again, point three, area agency on aging or uh, the SHIP line, through that, you can connect and find a SHIP rep, talk to someone right down in Springfield. They also can do other things for you. And later, further down, we talk about um, Illinois benefit access. And what that does for you is if you qualify based on income, you can get a discount on your license plate stickers or you can get a ride free transit benefit. So all of this is the reason why open enrollment is something very precious and valuable and not to let it go by without at least taking a peek. Lastly, the extra help application. That also is called on benefits access. It generally is something that you could go to one of the senior centers and they have what's called a SHAP person. They're a senior health access per program. And they go through and they tell you what they need and it's basically income information. And they help you to see if you can get extra help paying the premiums for your prescription drugs through Medicare, if the vendor that you choose has a premium and to lower your drug costs, where the maximum you would pay on certain brands would be $9.60 for the year of 2021 and $3.70. And those could be, I've seen medication up to $2,000 and people pay $3.70. So again, these are some things that uh, we don't know about, we don't hear about, and not every ship person will go through it because it does extend the time that you're in with them, but you have those rights, you have those benefits, they are there for you. We will share this contact information with you again on the end of the presentation, but I pray that this has helped uh, giving you a little bit more um, 
information and for more courage and also giving you something that you didn't know that may help you and be prepared for January 1st. But please do go online, check it out, have fun with it. Uh, it used to be a little hard to work their website, but now they have a video on every screen. You don't know, you push the video indicator and it will walk you through what to do. And those are the improvements that have been asked for by beneficiaries. So thank you very much. We appreciate you and please share the word. Have a blessed day all. Thank you, Angela. Uh, as you're releasing the screen, I want to let you know that we got a question from Facebook. Uh, Veronica is asking, do you have any information? And you may need to uh, get that later uh, for Indiana because she lives on the border of Indiana and she wanted to know if you had information for her. I, I don't have Indiana right in my hands, but it's accessible online because you do have to tell it the state that you're residing in and it pulls the plans for that state so that you can look up to see because it, it is amazing. Each state is different. Each state handles Medicaid differently. Uh, each state may have different other accessible programs such as extra help. Um, so I'll, I just have Illinois with me tonight, but if she wants additional information please give that to us and I'll be happy to look that up for her. Or she can contact one of the, um, use the national ship number on the contact form and they will connect her with an Indiana ship representative. Thank you so much, Angela, so we welcome. appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Our next uh, speaker is Belinda, uh, Belinda Jordan. Uh, we've already kind of talked about her credentials, but she is also an amazing person and she's going to talk to us more about uh, Medicare A, B, C, and D, all those little alphabets that we don't understand. So thank you so <laughs> much, Belinda, for being here. Oh, it's my pleasure. And I'm so happy to be on this call. Angela covered a lot of great information. Some of this I'm going to share may be redundant, but today I'm going to talk about Medicare basics. Uh, sitting in front of seniors, you know, even those who've been on Medicare for a long time, they still have a lot of questions. And so I just want to do the basics of Medicare. Uh, like uh, Reverend Yvette said, you know, we have questions. So write your questions down and we can definitely take those um, or put them in the chat and we can take those specifically uh, as we get towards the end. So let's talk about um, understanding Medicare and your options. Um, so uh, Medicare is for anyone who's 65 years or older and they have been a re they're U.S. citizens or legal resident for at least five consecutive years and has worked uh, at least 40 credit hours. Or that equates to about 10 years. Um, uh, it, is, it also applies to people who are 65 years, who are under 65, who have a qualifying disability, Angela alluded to that, or anyone who has end-stage renal disease uh, or Lou Gehrig disease, they automatically qualify for Medicare. Now, when you become eligible for Medicare, you enroll in, through Social Security. Um, and so when you enroll in Social Security, you're gonna get a red, white, and blue card. Um, this card is uh, the card you get when you go and register. And when you register, this is called Original Medicare, Parts A and Part B. You will be assigned a Medicare number, and original Medicare still, there's still some responsibility for some costs. And Angela talked about some of that and I'll go into that a little bit more. Um, and so the purpose of this session is to explain what original Medicare covers, why you need additional coverage and the options you have. So let's talk about, you know, uh, the additional health plans available to you. So part C, this is part here, um, that is called Medicare Advantage. Part D is the, the part that covers your drugs, helps you with your drugs, and then Medic, uh, Medicare Supplement or Medigap. You heard Angela refer to that, Medicare Supplement. When they say Medigap, that's what they're talking about. After you get original Medicare, you have two options for additional coverage. Option one, you can get Medicare Supplement option. You can choose original uh, Medicare A and B and add a supplemental plan. And you would also need to add a prescription drug plan if this is the route you choose to go. 
Option two would be Medicare Advantage plan or Part C. Um, uh, it, Part C includes A and B, and in most plans, it also would include a prescription drug plan wrapped into one. So why is that important? It's because if you go with an Advantage plan, you don't have to get a separate drug plan like you do if you stay with original Medicare, because typically the drug plan is included in your Part C plan. Um, okay, so let's get a little bit more detail about what original Medicare Part A and Part B cover. Let's talk about Part A. Part A covers your hospital. And under this hospital care, these are some of the things that it covers. Inpatient hospital care, inpatient mental health care, skilled nursing facility care, hospice care, and some blood transfusions. A little bit more about Part A. Part A doesn't require premium. So premiums is what you pay each month for your insurance. Where Part A, there is no premium that you have to pay, but there is a deductible and this is an annual deductible. So uh, in order for, your, for Part A to pay for your hospital costs, you have to pay the first $1,408. And then once you pay that, then day one through 60 for your hospital stay, there's no cost. The cost comes in to play after day 60. And you can see here how that escalates to the point where if you have to, ha have to be in the hospital more than 150 days, all the cost becomes out of pocket. Um, many times a hospital will send you to a skilled nursing facility to rehab. And when you go to a skilled nursing facility for under part A, then it will cover the first 20 days at no cost to you. And then after day 20, then your cost goes to $176 per day. After day 100, all of that cost becomes the cost to the insured. And there is no limit to how much you have to pay for that. So if you are in the hospital a long time, there's no limit to your cost. And that's important to know that. We'll talk about why that's important in a few minutes. So let's talk about part B. Part B is the plan that covers your doctor's visits, physician services, outpatient hospital services, home health services, all of your lab services, durable medical equipment. So these are the things that Part B covers. And so uh, Part B also has a premium. So if you're on Medicare, you already know about this. Everybody pays a premium for $144.60 per month. This premium can fluctuate. In fact, in 2021, it's going to go up to $148. Also, there's a deductible. It's $198 per year, the deductible. That's your responsibility. And after then, then the uh, Part B starts to pick up your doctor's costs. You pay 20%, the Part B pays 80%. And if, so if you have a doctor's visit, did you go and see the doctor, you know, you know, four times a month and you know whatever you know you go see a therapist or whatever you're going to pay that 20 percent, and there's no out-of-pocket limit uh you'll just continue to pay that so that's important to know that also it's important to know that you know this doesn't apply to a lot of people but if you are someone who is a high income earner of uh, an individual who makes more than eighty-seven thousand dollars a year this 144 dollars could be higher for you or if you're a married couple and your cost, your income is higher than $174,000 a year, then that is also gonna increase. This premium is gonna increase for, for those people. Now let's talk a little bit more about the supplements uh, because this is when you saw how much that 20% could be and um, you know, with your hospital costs could escalate. So the supplemental plan is there to help cover that cost. It covers the cost that Part A and Part B don't cover. And that's why people who stay with original Medicare would pick up a Medigap plan to help cover those costs. And, and when we talk about Medicare supplement plans, there's plans A through N. Now, don't get this confused with uh, parts, like Medicare is parts A and B, C and D. For, for, so for, Medi for Medicare is parts, but for Medi Medicare supplements is plans. So you can see here the different plans will offset certain costs. Uh, the more popular plan is Part G because you see it covers a lot of costs. And so a lot of people, when they go with a supplemental plan, they'll choose uh, G uh, because you know they're trying to offset as much cost as they can. 
uh, if they can afford it. And then uh, part F, I, I highlighted this because effective in 2020, um, if you turn 65 in 2020 and going forward, you this plan would not be available to you. So I wanted to make note of that. Um, now let's talk about the drug plan. So if you go with original Medicare A and B and a Medigap plan, then you would need a standalone prescription drug plan. Because one of the things about prescription drugs, you know, sometimes when people are healthy, they don't need prescription drugs. But in, oh, my screen is just stalled here. It's not moving. Give me just a moment. Okay, let me go back. Sorry about that. My screen just cut out here. <laughs> I'm not sure why I did that. No but, problem. It, uh, it happens. Me... That's technology. You're doing great. You're doing great. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so let me pull that back up. Like it just stopped working. I think that this is great information as Belinda is sharing. Oftentimes we don't know um, if we're not familiar, if we're not the people who are the experts, we're only relying on uh, people's expertise. And so I'm grateful that she's sharing with us this tonight. Yeah, because I run across yeah. people all the time and uh, seniors and they're like, well, I don't, I don't really understand, you know, and so, uh, as Angela referred to, you know, and I'll get into this in a minute, uh, if I can get back to it. Uh, let's see if it's going to come up. Uh, it's, it's like my system just stopped working. Um, okay, finished. Here we go. Let me go back over here and start the slideshow back. Okay, let's go here. I'm going to go. I'm going to just fast forward to where we were. I apologize for this inconvenience, you guys. Thank you so much for your patience. It is not a problem at all. That's technology today. <laughs> Important information. I've run through this presentation uh, today just to make sure we wouldn't run into this to make sure it was smooth, but you know. Technology you tries, but he's, he's <laughs> defeated. <laughs> um, okay, so let's get back over to D. Okay. Okay, so as I was saying that with the drug plans, um, this is important because, you know, the cost of drugs can be a really high cost. And Part D, just like with Medicare, um, me, uh, Medicare um, um, supplement plans, those plans are approved uh, to be sold by, stand I mean, by independent insurance companies. And so when you're looking for a drug plan, it's important that when you are comparing the different plans because the deductibles vary, the premiums may vary depending on the company that you go with. And so you just wanna make sure that the plan you select is gonna meet the needs that you have, making sure that your drugs are covered at the least amount of cost. So that's why that's so important uh, when you're selecting, if you choose to go with traditional Medicare A and B and uh, a Medicare uh, supplement uh, and you pick that drug plan, you wanna make sure that you know, you're picking the plan that's best for you. So let's talk about this second option, which is um, Medicare Ad Advantage. So Medicare Advantage, like we said earlier, is covers A and B, which is your doctor and your hospital cost. And it also, and it's called Medicare Advantage, which is Part C. So when people say Part C, that's what they're talking about. Uh, and Medicare Advantage covers your hospital, your doctors, and your drugs. Now you can get an Advantage plan that doesn't care, cover your drugs. I don't know why anybody want to do that because that's the beauty of it. If you go with a Medicare Advantage plan, you don't have to get a separate standalone drug plan. Also, Advantage plans may have some routine dental coverage, vision, and hearing. Those things are not covered under uh, an, uh, a supplemental plan. 
Uh, and so that's why, you know, many times people, if they're trying to minimize their costs and have some additional services, they may choose to go with an advantage plan. And so part, part C plans consist of HMO plans, PPO and POS plans. These are some of the some of the options you have with the Medicare Part C. But like Part D and like supplemental plans, uh, Medicare Advantage plans are sold by independent carriers, insurance companies. So the premiums could vary. Uh, they can go anywhere from zero premiums because there are zero premium plans to small monthly premiums. And so you know you really want to shop around for the plan that best suits your needs. Uh, the deductibles may vary from plan to plan, from carrier to carrier. So that's important to know that when you're looking at a plan. And also the cost for your, no, you don't necessarily have a uh, cost for Part D, but uh, the different plans, the drugs covered could vary. So that's important. Another important factor that, uh, that an Advantage plan offers you is what they call a maximum of out-of-pocket. Unlike a... Uh, if you go with traditional Medicare, you know, you could get into places where the out-of-pocket could be astronomical. It could be totally unaffordable. And so either you would get the supplemental plan or if you go with a, a, with a Part C plan, there's a maximum each year of out-of-pocket. That maximum of out-of-pocket could be different for every different plan. So knowing what you're getting and knowing why you, you know, knowing what your needs are is very important. So because Medigap versus, you know, uh, versus Medicare advantages are, you know, they're different. Many times people know what they want, but this is just a quick kind of a synopsis comparing the differences. You know, with a Medicare supplement plan, you have a lot more versatility. You don't have a necessary have a network. You can pretty much go where you want. That's important for people who travel a lot, maybe. They want to just be able to go where they, they don't want to have a referral. And so that's why they may go with a supplemental plan, but there's a premium with that every month. As an, an Advantage plan, you know, you have some restrictions. You know, if it's an HMO or PPO, you may have some restrictions with your doctors. Maybe there's some restrictions uh, with staying in net network. So that's important to understand, you know, PPOs versus HMO, they work a lot like they do in the private sector. Um, also with Medicare supplement, you can change in the middle of the year with your supplemental plan if you don't like it. But with a Medicare Advantage plan, you have specific periods when you can make changes. And so we'll talk more about that on the next slide. Um, with your supplemental plan, you have a monthly premium and that varies depending on the company that you go with. Uh, and you have your, your out-of-pocket costs. There may, you know, that could vary depending on the plan that you choose. So as opposed to with your Advantage plan, you have a maximum out of pocket each year. So you know you're not gonna pay more than X, whatever that is, out of pocket. Usually the premiums are low or to, or to zero. And sometimes there are co-pays and co-insurances. So understanding what those costs are is very important. With your Medicare supplement, there's no drug plan, but you have to, you have to pick a, a standalone drug plan. With your Advantage plans, the drug plan is typically built into the plan. Um, and with your supplemental plan, there's no dental, vision, and hearing. But with Advantage plans, sometimes there's some basic dental, vision, and hearing coverage. So those are things that really, you know, we need to know about when we're just trying to decide what best suits our needs. When it comes to um, Medicare supplement, there are enrollment periods we need to be aware of. Now, this uh, Medicare annual um, AEP, that's... Uh, annual uh, initial enrollment. So everybody who becomes turned 65, they uh, qualify to enroll in Medicare. And so you have three months before your birthday, your birthday month, and you have three months after your birthday. That's your enrollment window that you have to enroll in Medicare without uh, facing any penalties. Um, then the, the, the time that we're looking at right now, this is called annual enrollment period. This is from October 15th to December 7th. This happens every year, and this really applies to people who have uh, a Medicare supplement, a, a Medicare Advantage plan. If you're in a Medicare Advantage plan, this is the time when you can change your plan. You can make adjustments to your plan. You need to know what plan changes are going to affect you in the new year, just in case you need to go to a different plan or make some adjustments. This is that window of time, 
And any change you make here is effective January 1st of the following year. Now, let's say you pick a plan in this time period and you don't like it, but something about it wasn't what you thought. You know, you made them, you know, I, you know, I really want to go back to my, you have an opportunity we'll called open enrollment, which happens between January 1st and March 31st, where you can make another change. But that's a window that if you, if you made a change here, October 15th to December 7th, you have another opportunity to change again, if you so choose. You don't have to. And if you don't do it inside of this window, then you may qualify what they call special enrollment. And, you know, say if you, you, know, you were on your, your employer's plan and that plan ended, then that would, that, would, that would qualify you for a special enrollment. If you moved outside your coverage area, that might qualify you for a special enrollment. So there are other things that might qualify you for a special enrollment where you may need to change outside of these dates. But if, if that doesn't apply, then these are the dates when you can make changes to your plan. And so it's important to just, you know, you can, all this information is available to you on medicare.gov. Angela's referred to this a lot. There's so much information here and they're making this, this website so much more user-friendly for uh, not only for uh, the recipients, uh, beneficiaries, uh, but just, you know, people who are helping you with your plan. You can come here and you can research or you can call and you can ask questions. So this is so important. Get familiar with this plan. Go in and set up your own profile and put your meds in there so you can know what your cost is going to be even before you enroll in the plan. This is a great uh, resource for uh, Medicare uh, beneficiaries. So, you know, like I said before, at the beginning of the presentation, if you have questions, you know, write them down. We're going to have an opportunity for question and answers at the end. Here's my phone number and my email address. If you want to email me with questions, feel free to do that. Uh, I'm so happy to be able to service you guys and just provide this information. Um, so I'm going to turn it back over to uh, uh, Reverend Yvette at this time. Thank you, Belinda. We appreciate that very much. You've done a great job uh, explaining all of the alphabets of, uh, <laughs> of insurance. We have next uh, Thomas uh, Henderson, who is going to talk to us about uh, just some of the end of life um, issues and some insurance that you may not know that you even qualify for. So we're glad to have you. Thank you, uh, Thomas, for showing. We, up, we appreciate that very much. Well, I'm glad to be a part of this conversation. And first of all, let me just say thanks to both of the presenters. I mean, wow, uh, what a bevy of information, a plethora of information they just share with us. And in fact, let me just say this to you. I wish that we could get the church's database in which we could capture everybody that's age 64 and make it a requirement that they be a part of this kind of a conversation because oftentimes people learn about this after the fact. And even as the ladies were making their presentations, there's so many similarities in terms of enrollment dates to what we know as the Affordable Care Plan. So I think that they've shared some excellent information. I am now a part of that group, that 65 group. I know I don't look like it, you know, but, uh, uh, but I learned so much more as a part of that. And I have to say, I really wish that I've had this conversation with you guys even before I made that mark as well too. And so kudos to each one of you all. And I hope that there is a larger form in which you'll be able to share that information. So I had shared with uh, Reverend Yvette um, that um, unfortunately, I don't have a physical presentation to be able to provide to you, but part of it is because of a disclaimer. As a State Farm agent, I am not able to talk about specific products. So I'm not coming here to sell anything to you at all. I'm here to give you information. So as she talked about end of life, I, I always don't like to use that term because some of us don't know whether or not end of life is gonna be 121 years of age or whether or not it's gonna be at 66 years of age. So we really don't know. But the whole point of it is, is preparation. We have to make sure, especially within our African-American community, that we do the best that we can for preparing for what is inevitable. We always had a saying within the life insurance industry uh, to basically say that, you know what, either if you can pay for the life insurance ahead of time, or you can just pay for the expenses to go after it if you don't prepare for it one way or the other because it's important that you have something to take care of the expenses that you will leave behind 
because most of the times that when we pass on, we're leaving on expenses to other people, whether or not it's to dispose of a house, to dispose of credit, to dispose of expenses. And a lot of times that especially within communities outside of the African-American community, they use the term for life insurance as legacy insurance. You hear what I said, legacy insurance. We don't hear much talk in our communities about that we inherited this policy from this family member or that family member. Sometimes we just find out that there was this $2,000 policy that grandma had that she was paying pennies on. And then when they found out later on when grandma passed away that the policy was worth nothing. And that's the unfortunate part that we have within our community because we don't have a lot of information. So what I'm gonna to try to share with you is just some general information and why I think it's important that each one of us make sure that we have a discussion with a qualified individual about talking about life insurance. But first of all, since I can't mention names of companies or commercials or anything like that, I might allude to it, but uh, one of the things that I always wanna make sure that when people are watching commercials on television about life insurance, is that you don't get caught up by the fancy commercial because at the very end of the commercial, you know, it has that fine print that's very, you know, way at the bottom and it's so small and it's so quick. They put it up there just like that because they really don't want you to read it in the first place. And most of the times that when it comes to life insurance and uh, we know that there's one of the products that's out there, uh, well, I said I'm not going to mention names, so, but there's a company that's out there and they tell you that you can buy life insurance for like pennies a day. <laughs> and they tell you that you don't have to take an exam. They tell you that uh, uh, you don't have to qualify for anything, but you know there's nothing that's free. And so what I always tell people is the fact that whenever companies are coming to you like that, it's because of the fact that they don't want to tell you the true information because there are a lot of caveats that are behind that. So let me give you the, for instance, there are a lot of insurance companies that will tell you that you can buy insurance for pennies a day. But then what they don't tell you is the fact that even if they say that it's going to cost you less than 30 cents, you know, a month or 30 cents a day, they don't tell you or you don't hear them say that it's based upon per unit, okay? A unit generally means that it's $1,000 of coverage. So if you wanted to have a $5,000 policy and let's say that they said that it's gonna be like $3 you know, per unit, that means the fact that you might be paying $15 a month for that life insurance policy. So make sure that you pay attention to what it means by unit because that's a very big part of what makes the difference in terms of how much you're gonna pay for it. The second part of that is the language that they don't share with you about what I call almost like the hidden information. By that, because a lot of these companies don't tell you that there's generally a two year contestability period that companies have a right to refuse to be able to pay your benefits. Let me give you an example. Sometimes people buy these kind of life insurance policies and they don't realize that the fine line says that if you would pass away within two years of taking out this policy, the only thing that your beneficiary gets out of the policy is what you paid into it. That's the unfortunate part of that. A life insurance company that is truly a life insurance company, you want to make sure that you have a policy that says that if something happens, whether or not you get hit by a car the next day or whether or not you have some kind of a condition that you didn't know about, but it developed later on, that even if that's within the two years, they're not going to snatch that policy away. But the truth of it is that every insurance company has what they call a contestability period. Contestability means that they have a right within the first two years that if a person would pass away from a condition, they have a right to go back to see, did this individual give true information at the time of the application? Did they misrepresent? Did they not tell something? Sometimes a person can wind up dying of something, but they had no knowledge of it because they never went to the doctor to go see about it. And if the insurance company issued the policy, that means that the insurance company is on the hook to be able to pay that. 
So make sure that you're paying attention to that contestability period. So therefore you don't get caught off guard with that. There are some great insurance products that are out there. There's what, and Belinda will tell you about as well. There's what they call permanent or whole life insurance. There's what they call term insurance. And a lot of times that at our ages, we're not generally able to get term insurance policies because a term policy, though it's one of the least expensive policies that you can purchase out there, it means the fact that the policy is going to stay the same once it's issued for a certain period of time or a certain term of time. So let's say if it's a 10 year term, if you're 65, that means that that policy would stay in place at the same premium up until age 75. But depending upon the way that the company has its policy, when that policy comes up at age 75, that policy could just jump up in terms of its premium cost. Let me give you an example. One of my clients, because uh, I haven't had this agency for a very long time, I inherited it from another agent. Well, one of their policies, they had it for 20 years and the policy just renewed uh, as of December the 3rd. Well, they were paying $36 a month when they took out this life insurance policy 20 years ago. Well, this renewal on this policy turned out to be $801 per month in terms of the cost of renewing that policy. Having regular conversations with your insurance agent, sometimes there are better products that are out there before you get to the renewal that can be a, a, a lot less of a cost because as we get older and as the world gets better in terms of medical conditions being in, uh, improved, there are a lot of opportunities where cancer is being uh, cured. There's diabetes, you know, medications that are out there. So the, the longer that you have a policy, that means that there are gonna be some, some, some great uh, discoveries out there that will make life insurance cheaper for you. One of the products that I will talk about, and it's not just specific to my company, but there are a lot of companies that are out there that I think that this product is really good. It's called a final expense policy. A final expense policy is a form of whole life or permanent insurance. Well, final expense is designed to be able to say, hey, I just want something very simple, very basic, that when something happens to me, because I don't ever say, I never say that life insurance is uh, if insurance. It's the only insurance that you can buy that when it happens, okay? So uh, what we say is that with final expense, it's a $10,000 flat insurance policy. And typically what those policies do is that you generally don't have to take a medical exam to go along to have that policy issue. Well, as I told you earlier, that sounds like it's kind of a trick. Well, it's not because of the fact that there are some questions that you have to answer. And as long as you say no to all of those particular questions, then that policy is automatically gonna be issued for you. However, those policies are already rated to be able to say they're assuming that you have some type of condition that might not be insured if in fact uh, you weren't able to qualify for it in some other way. So you're generally paying a higher policy, but at least you'd have a policy in which you can purchase and have. So I would say, talk to someone about permanent or whole life insurance, especially if you're 50 and over. Talk to someone about a final expense policy if you are 50 and over. So I would just like to say, make sure that you sit down, even if you've had policies, life and policies that are sitting in the drawer, take them out this week, go through them, see whether or not these are policies that are still in effect. Better than that, find your loved ones. If your parents are still living, if you have brothers or sisters, check their policies to make sure that they have something that's in force. Because the worst thing that we ever find, especially in our industry, and Belinda will tell you the same thing, is that there are so many people who call around when a loved one dies, and then they say, oh, did he have a policy over here? Did he have a policy over there? And then they find this policy that's in the drawer and they say, aha, oh, he had a life insurance policy. But when they call the company, they find out that that policy is no longer any good. So do your due diligence now because the fact that life insurance can help be a legacy, especially for those in our community. 
So I want to thank Reverend Yvette Breckenridge for this opportunity. I just wanted to make it as brief as possible, but hopefully I've been able to give you some basic information, but more than that, encourage you to talk to a professional who can help you in an individual situation. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. We're so grateful to you for, uh, for adding that. Obviously, many of us don't know that kind of information at all, and we are grateful that you are here to, uh, to let us know, and we are grateful for that time. We have some time now for our guest to, uh, to answer some questions. Those of you who are here on Zoom and those of you who I see on Facebook, if you have a question, if you will go on and you can put that in the chat or you can open up your mic uh, here on Zoom to ask those questions. I think that you all gave us so much information. I don't even know if we even know how to handle all of that. So hopefully we can get a chance to uh, uh, look at that together. So uh, what are your thoughts, guys? Well, I just want to say first and foremost, thank you, Ms. Williams. Thank you, Ms. Jordan. And thank you very much, Mr. Henderson. And thank you. And thank you, Reverend Yvette. It was very, uh, insightful, very informative. Again, thank you. You're very welcome. Thank You're you for welcome. being here. Very welcome. Well, I have a question that I'd like to ask, especially of our Medicare specialists that are there too, because there are a number of individuals, because a lot of people aren't retiring at age 65 any longer. Mm -hmm. They're working longer. So oftentimes they may wind up having you know, a situation where they may still have their own, uh, let's say, employer-sponsored insurance, and then they are eligible for Medicare. So can you speak to that in terms of what you think a recommendation is for people who fall into that category? Angela, you want to speak to that? I will. Um, they still will get enrolled at 65 by uh, Medicare. But what they do, they do not have to take the uh, Medicare Part B because as Belinda stated, you're automatically enrolled into original Medicare. All you need to do is contact Medicare, let them know that you're covered under your spouse's or your own uh, employer insurance and they will delay enrolling you. And that's very key because if you just say drop Medicare Part B, there is an, a late fee when you finally pick it up and you and it's calculated based on the number of months it took you to sign up for it. And you pay that late fee plus your premium deduct premium every year for the rest of your life. So the communication is very vital. Even in the letter when you get it, um, it tells you that call if you have any questions. They also check to make sure that, um, it used to be that jobs gave you retiree benefits and part of that was prescription drugs. Well, Medicare found out that a lot of it wasn't up to par or under, up to standards. And in the year 2006, all companies had to totally revamp their retiree programs, recode every program that they had in order to meet Medicare standards. That's where you started seeing a lot of organizations, they could not continue to afford to give retiree benefits. Um, so Medicare does have a set standard. You have to meet that standard. Um, it, it, and another reason why you need to make sure you double check the uh, annual open enrollment. And that's for both any type of Medicare original or Medicare Advantage. The beauty of original, if you're a traveler, that's what you want because you can go anywhere in the United States of America that accepts Medicare and see any doctor, even specialists um, and so that's one reason why you would do so, but that's exactly what would happen. And we had, I had a lady call me a couple of weeks ago from church. That's what's happening with her. She's retiring from her job, but she's on her husband's insurance. Mm -hmm. He continues to work. So she's delaying part B 
and even her prescription drugs Part D and continue on his. And Medicare confirmed that the coverage was sufficient, that she did not have to pick up B nor D until she no longer was going to get that. At that time, then she'll call them. She will let them know. They will immediately enroll her and there will be no late fees attached. Those late fees can be um, three and four digits. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to add to that. Uh, so I had a situation with a gentleman who um, he enrolled in part A, he declined part B. He didn't realize when he did that, that, you know, what Medicare does says for every 12 months that you don't have part B when you were eligible for it, um, they charge you a 10% penalty. And if so, he was 75, he's 75. So he's going to pay 10% for 10 years on that, uh, on his premiums. And so if he had had a qualifying event, like um, where his, his job, he had a job that he was covering him or something that made him that his insurance was acceptable, he wouldn't have had to have that charge. But because he didn't have a qualifying event, then not only was did he not have part B, he didn't have a drug plan. And so there's a, there's a separate penalty for, for Part D. When you don't get Part D, when you're eligible for it, they charge you 1% per month for every month that you don't have it. Mm -hmm. And so that gets to be pretty pricey uh, because you're going to have that charge for, you know, for as long as you're on uh, Medicare Part A. Even if you're on an Advantage plan, you know, the, uh, Medicare looks at that, say, oh, you became eligible for, you picked up Part B through your, through your uh, advantage plan, it's still going to charge you the penalty. So that's important to know when you're going to, when you're ready to enroll uh, for Medicare. Wow. Exactly. exactly. Well, Reverend Yvette, I believe that we're going to be out of COVID this same time next year. And I'm very serious about the suggestion that I made that as we're able to maybe come back together and to have a classroom setting, that we do find a way in which to get people who are on the fringe of uh, turning 65 to get this wealth of information because these ladies need to take this show on the road because that way people would know about what they need to have saved. Uh, because a lot of people think that once you qualify for Medicare, you're, you're smooth sailing, but you heard about all the costs and charges that go along with that. And then people wind up perishing because they don't have the right information. So, so yeah, let's, uh, I applaud them and uh, I'll, let me put my two cents in to find out how we can make that happen for you guys because it's excellent, excellent, excellent information. I totally agree. Thank you so much, Thomas. Uh, where I see, you Thomas, everyone, where I see a lot of people is veterans because they feel that they could go to VA and get covered and they will just ignore everything and not realize, no, you need, let us help you. And that's where we will do a Medicare Advantage program for them, where they don't have a premium for it, but it does enroll them. They have A, B, and D. Mm. So because sometimes they do have to go seek outside help. Now, if VA refers them, VA is paying that bill. But there's times when it's not a referral. So uh, that's where I see a high volume or at least was getting a high volume of people coming into the senior center. And we have to help them walk through it, even though they still have to pay a copay with veterans, but um, um, trying to help them be educated and understanding. Don't throw it to the wind because you're losing something that it's very valuable and you worked for this and you earned it. Mm -hmm. And for those who might not have Medicare or did not, um, uh, especially some of our elders who were working prior to Medicare beginning in 1955 and they weren't having deductions taken out. Uh, that's where you even want to speak with uh, 311 Department of Aging Services because they might qualify for Medicaid. And uh, the Department of Aging number is on their contact sheet. Give them a call, talk with them, and see indeed what they can do to assist. So, and that's an answer to the question that came up in the chat box. Thank you, Angela. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, just put up real quickly 
uh, the, um, the slide that you had given us before with all the numbers so that you guys can have it again. If you notice uh, the senior Chicago Senior Assistant Hotline uh, is there, you can jot those numbers down. Also, this presentation will remain on Facebook. We'll also be uploading it to our YouTube page for Midday Bible Study Lessons, so you can get this information later as well. I wanna thank you guys so much for your time. Thank you guys for walking us through some very complicated information, helping us to understand. Before we go, I want to make sure that there are no questions uh, left in our Zoom participants nor in our Facebook page. For those of you who are on Facebook, if you had a question, we want to quickly get that in. But if not, uh, we want you to uh, give your information again and uh, to let them know where they can contact you for more information. So uh, will you each individually just tell them how you can be reached? Will do. Go, uh, I'm looking up my new number. <laughs> my number is area 312-450-0282. Again, Angela Williams, uh, she's a SHIP representative. Give your number one more time. 312-450-0282. Eight two. Thank you. Now, uh, Belinda. You uh, yes, um, my name is Belinda Jordan. I am an independent uh, health and life insurance uh, agent. Um, I'm going to give you two numbers. My um, um, the first number is uh, seven seven three six seven eight seven two one one, or you can call me at eight seven two. 529-1644. Either of those numbers, you can reach me. And uh, if you have questions, you want to email me, um, you can email me at um, um, Taylor, T-A-Y-L-O-R, made, M-A-D-E, 2020 at gmail.com. So I can be reached either one of those ways. If you have questions, um, you, you know, things that you didn't feel comfortable asking, you know, please reach out to me or Angela for that matter when it comes to Medicare. And um, and I, I'll extend myself out there and also on the life insurance side if there are questions about final expense. Thomas also is very versed in that area. You know, you could reach out to either one of us. If you just have questions, you want to know more about it, please uh, reach out to uh, either one of us. And Thomas? I'm Thomas Henderson. My number is 847 956 one one two two and then for other contact information because you can email me directly from my website which is at www.thomasb as in boy henderson.com again that's thomasbhenderson.com for more information and thanks again uh, to each one of you all for your time as well as allow me to be a part of this thank you guys so much for your time and thank you guys for coming on and listening. Those of you who are on Facebook, we were glad that you had a chance to join us as well. Feel free to share your information, share this information. This is great information. You all have a wonderful day and thank you so much for being here. Thank have you. a good night. Good night.